but he also sometimes when I'm in my study, he may change or he may shift me another way. But my title was The Struggle is Real. Okay, okay. The Struggle is Real. So um, I'm going to come out the word Philippians. In Philippians 27, I'm reading the King James Version. Philippians 1, 27 through 29. And it says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whenever I come and see you, or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is there to which is to them a proof of perdition. But unto you salvation, that is from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ that not only to believe in him, but to also, but to also suffer for his name's sake. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers and hearers of his holy word. Now in the book of Philippians, Paul is addressing the church of Philippi. He's addressing three classes of people. He is addressing the saints, the body of Christ bishops, overseers, deacons, and leadership. He gives them the expression of grace and peace to bring unity to the Greek and the Hebrew. Paul immediately, he immediately understands the circumstances of what he's been through to advance the gospel. And in Philippi, Paul was the one that was in the dungeon. And he aided, and he, he was the one that was in the dungeon, put in prison. And he aided the conversion of a jailer that was in Philippi, which later grew, he gained the, the Philippian church. The testimony alone impacted the church so much that Paul had the boldness to speak God's word, to be hopeful, even in dire straits, even in trouble, even in peril. In the church, according to the text, there are several reasons why the advancement of preaching was going on. We all know why preaching is so important. We are proclaiming God's word to his people. Then, why should any division be among the church? I believe what the word says and what God says. It states that it was named in the church. So if it's in the Bible, it's true. The first thing that they had to deal with was envy. Envy is a feeling of discontent or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, their qualities, or their look. They also dealt with rivalry, competition, for the same objective, for superiority in the same field. They were also dealing with jealousy. Anybody know what I'm talking about when I say jealousy? Because to me, well, this not, shouldn't be in the body of Christ. Because in the body of Christ, what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's patience, it's kindness, it's goodness, it's gentleness. It's faithfulness and not all of that now. Y'all know, don't leave out self-control. Self-control. So the church thought that, you know, that they can come against Paul. But see, Paul had exposed the church, the, the body, the deacons, and the bishops because of envy, rivalry, and jealousy. He exposed them. You know what I'm saying? Because if we're in the same body and we have different gifts, there's different gifts in the body of Christ. There should be no rivalry. I shouldn't be envious of anybody in here because of what God has called me and anointed me to do. But understand that I have sisters and brothers in ministry, and we're supposed to do what God has called us to do. But since Paul, y'all know who he was before he was Paul, he was Saul, right? right. So now he's struggling to convey a message to a church that say they got it all together. To a church that says that, you know, um, even though you've been converted and I'm preaching, meaning preaching the gospel, they were in the wrong spirit. You shouldn't be in the spirit of envy. You shouldn't be in the spirit of rivalry and you shouldn't be jealous of anybody. That is the wrong spirit. Yes. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of love. Okay? Yes. Yes. So you don't know how when you do when you be struggling, how you come out of a struggle. It must be made forceful or it's a violent effort. Or someone to be free from restraint or constriction. It's, uh, the noun struggle is a forceful or violent event to get free from restraint or resist attack. 
they are human. So basically, they were attacking Paul because of his relationship with the Lord. And now he came to the church to show them that, yes, they're preaching. Yes, they're doing that, but they don't have the power or the anointing to do what God has called us to do. Now, according to the church, these are people in position. It is the church, the saints. It is the deacons. It is the bishops. But they're preaching in the wrong spirit. That revelation had brought to my attention that when we're in Christ, it is a joy to do what God has called us to do. It's a level of consciousness. We're free from sin. We're complete in holiness, and we behold in Christ directly to dwell in his presence. Not in his presence, in the presence of the Lord. So as we go further down in the, in the word, it basically says our main objective is to be with Christ and to die to our flesh. Therefore, a Christian is not a loss. It's a gain. For a Christian is not a loss. It's a gain. And y'all know the benefits of the Lord is immeasurable. You hear that slogan, you're in good hands with the old state. God's hands are the best hands to be in. Yeah, yeah. Or Campbell's slogan, it's mm -mm good. Okay. God is good. Yeah. All the time yeah. and all the time, yeah. God is good. Now, bounty is supposed to be the quicker picker up. But in the upper room, the Holy Spirit rests oh. upon the disciples like fire. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, and I ain't never shaping you into who you are to become. Your life is a substitute. And when you are yielded unto God, your yes may require you to endure more than what you signed up for. Your obedience is required for you to be ashamed according to the world statement. All I know is that he has, that has become, begun a good work is able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ's return. We say that he is returning for a church without spot or wrinkle. To be humiliated means to reduce to lower persons in one own eyes or other eyes to make ashamed or embarrassed, mortify, and it says hope that they cannot be humiliated themselves. It's talking about the definition of being humiliated. It is difficult to be that, but in humiliation, God is humbling you that Christ may be exalted. And it's far more important than anything we can ever fathom. Paul, when he was converted in his cell, had an understanding of the thing that he must suffer for Christ's name's sake. In his service as an apostle, he endured many hardships. What reminds, reminds me of the constant letters and devotion in his service. The struggle is real for the saints. The struggle is real for the bishops. The struggle is real for deacons. Now I wanted to talk about Paul's struggle, but not only should we talk about Paul's struggle, but we should talk about our struggles, things that we go through since we have called upon the name of Jesus. Because Paul, he had, had a conversion, meaning he was Saul. So his embarrassment was, you know, he had the letters and the cards, I'm going back to the, in his word, where it says in Acts, 16, where Paul had, Acts 16, 16 through 40, where Paul and Silas 
when they were doing the work of the Lord, a little slave girl had followed them. And she kept saying, keep doing, you know, these are men of God, you should listen to them. But see, she was in the wrong spirit. So when Paul turned and spoke to that spirit, he said to that spirit, come out in the name of Jesus. And that spirit came out. Now, he did the right thing, but because he did the right thing did not mean that he was going to be or not be humiliated. So they went to the marketplace, and in the marketplace, they had got the city officials to come against them and say that they're teaching the wrong thing. They're not teaching what is true. They're not teaching the truth. So since they weren't teaching the truth, they beat them. Not only did they beat them, but they stripped them. A mob came upon them. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking to the ones that understand what it is to be humiliated. It wasn't for a wrong reason. It was for a right reason. And even though they stripped them, they beat them, they put them in jail. Not to just out of jail. They put them on the inner side to lock them up. And when they put them in jail to lock them up, to make sure that there is no escape, the Lord is letting me know that in some situations that you're going through right now, the enemy has already counted it to be a defeat. But God says that you have the victory. And your victory will become out of your praise and out of your worship. See, they were in prayer. Not only did Paul and Silas pray in prayer, they sung hymns unto the Lord. And the worship of God in the middle of a jail cell, in the middle of a dead situation, shook the foundations of the jail. The Lord caused an earthquake to come. And when the earthquake came, all of the doors flew open in the jail. So the jailer woke up, and when the jailer woke up and he looked around and saw what had happened, he thought that, oh, I'm going to be in trouble. You know how we do when we get worried? Oh, I'm, I feel like it's my fault. So now they're going to come and get me, and he decided that he was going to take his life. But you know what? Paul shouted out in the darkness and said, do not take your life. We are all here. Don't take it. Don't do it. And he said, okay, I need a light to come with me. And when the light came to him, he said, now I'm going to go up in there. And he went in there and fell at their feet and asked them, what must I do to be saved? Hey. We have the assurance of salvation and eternity to fuel us to our future with Christ. There is no time to look back, back down, clamber up, get comfortable from day to day news. It is our job to do something about it. It's time to speak what God instructs us and to live like he taught us and to be what he called us. No more excuses for not being ready. Unknown reasons for accomplishing the will of God. Deliverance is in you to accomplish God's will for your life. Chaos is all around us. We have authority through Jesus to speak to the wind and to the water. He has given us victory to proclaim the word and the will of God in a dying world. God is real. Real in my soul. Yes, God is real for he has touched and made me whole. His love for me as pure as pure gold. Yes, God is real for I can feel him in my soul. And every chance I get to invite you to the altar to make Jesus your choice for your life, I will. I used to be traditional and say, the doors of the church is open when you come. Even now, the altar is available for you. Mm. Wherever you are, know that Jesus died for you. He died on the tree of Calvary for your sins. Not just your sins, but the sins of the whole world. They placed him in a borrowed tomb. That is not the end of his story. On the third day, Jesus rose from the grave with all power. He walked this earth, ascended into heaven to be with the Father. He gave us access to the receiving of the Holy Spirit. It was sent from God. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Father will come and sup with you. You have access to God through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Please don't delay. Come to Jesus while you have time. He is available to you today, right now, to exact, to be exact. If you are in the body of Christ mm, or not, this is not time to be ashamed. No one is watching or looking for a reason to stop you from getting what you need from the Lord. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. Never ever does God fall short of his word. Never fall short of his word. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank so the struggle is real. But we have the victory in Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your name for your word there. Yes, God is the joy and the strength of my life. He rules all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me, never ever fall short of his word. Thank you, Jesus. 